Elliot wanted to record it. I just remembered, so I just clicked the record button. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So yeah, generally we're talking about um, Vault um, and wanting to have, oh, Camille's in the document, maybe he's coming. Uh, wanting to have a, a better uh, or a tighter, inter tight integration with Vault. And just so, just to kind of like set the mood or the, the overall vision, you know, our opinion is that Vault's kind of one secret to management, right? Uh, and because it's one secrets management and our secrets management is very basic, obviously, um, instead of trying to continue to like reinvent the wheel of secrets management, we should integrate with Vault very tightly. Um, that opinion is, you know, just from being an industry. And then it's also very clear if you look at the um, Vault issue and the number of, you know, customers that are also Vault customers that want this integration. Um, but trying to find like the MVC of that, I think is going to be a challenge and, and lot, the main reason, we, the main thing we want to get out of this meeting. Um, and so um, that, that's kind of, that's kind of what we wanted to do. And I, I don't know, I know Tomas has opinions. Um, Steve, I'm interested in your opinions about like, how do we, how do we even define an MVC there? Right. What, yeah, what does it look uh, like? And, yeah, go ahead. I think uh, it's like both me and Tomas uh, left some uh, discussions on like how to do the integration first place, how it will look like. Because uh, we see it, there can be two ways, either on the rail side or directly through the runner side. Both have pros and cons. Uh, if we do it on the rail side, it's going to be more UX, uh, more front end work. But if we do it on the runner side, it's going to be purely backend work. So like time to delivery on the runner, it's going to be uh, much quicker. And even uh, like architecture wise, I believe it will be more secure because uh, the rails won't be involved in handling the secret management. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. I, I agree that there is definitely some sense to saying it should be on the runner side. Um, not that I would ever use Jenkins as the model, but as I was thinking through the MVC here, um, I mean, their integration with Vault is very minimal, right? Like it's, there's a concept in Vault of, um, I think it's called app role or something like that, right? It's basically like a shared key role for uh, like machine. It's the way that Vault recommends you do machine to machine communication, right? Um, and you basically assign that role, right? Um, and so from that regard, I think you're right. Like the probably the more secure, more in line with the vault pattern way of doing it would be to do it on the runner. Yeah. And if you look at the vault users, who are they? They're like the DevOps people, the system ops people. They're not right. the developers. So the develop, like for me as a sysadmin, putting the sysadmin hat, I wouldn't want my developers to have access to my secrets. Right, right. And this so, would be the way to this would be the way to, to control it then, right? Because like exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. like that, uh, if we do it on the rails, like someone with maintainer access will have access to the vault, which might be proper company data secrets and things like that. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm down here up. Oh, well, Camille's in the same place I am in the document. Um, adding the, the integration, like again, you, you say, or I don't know if it's Tomas, I don't know whose notes it is, maybe Tomas. Um, not to, you know, discuss implementation too early, but let's discuss implementation too early. Um, like putting it in GitLab Runner Helper. Um, that's not the craziest idea I've ever heard. Um, uh no, but I left a note below. Oh, they have you? something, yeah. They have something called Vault Agent, which which does something similar to what Thomas said. Basically, it's a daemon that runs on your server and stores the secret on a file. So we could use that if we want instead of rebuilding it ourselves. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm just I, uh, about from it. what I understand, I haven't like put too much. Uh, research I wanted to, but I didn't have the time to. Yeah, I, I, and I've been doing a little bit too on my end. I've got, I'm getting Vault set up myself, <laughs> which was one of my to-dos in that. 
epic of like how do we get to vault integration better um and, but yeah i'm just looking nice, at it right now yeah. go ahead sorry and the nice part about fault as well if we do it on the runner level if you look at the authentication methods it can authenticate with github so we can do something similar for gitlab uh using the job token or something yeah. like that so yeah. we'd have like first class support with vault from vault side and that's like an open source project so we can contribute ourselves contribute but back. that yeah but that will take a really long a longer time of course yeah i think did i add that to the epic i wanted to put that in the epic if i haven't I uh, i'm not sure i didn't see it. like i i only saw that fault does that one i was going through the docs yeah. i didn't see it in the issue yeah let me it's not um um I'm just i'm just gonna write that down because I, I thought of that too uh, so yeah the idea of adding you know contribute back i have an integration uh, product off, right yeah uh, they have an integration uh, flow like you, you first you get in contact with them through the plugin and so on and so forth like sure, sure. it's quite well documented how they do it yeah. so but again we can do that we can do that after the rest of this probably exactly right? yeah yeah, yeah we, we can do go through uh, normal jwt or through kubernetes like if we want proper mvc we first do the kubernetes integration I don't actually think about having GitLab as a, an authentication method for fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting though if you read if you read the GitHub one, and I guess it would probably be true how we do it too. But if you read the GitHub one, they're like, important note does not support OAuth workflow, <laughs> right? Like about how it's like a little bit less secure than yeah, yeah, yeah. just the personal access token. But you know, for people that understand that risk, you know, it's fine. Um, Camille, other, other thoughts that, that we haven't brought, like, does anyone want to, I guess the, the big question is right now, does anyone want to challenge runner being the right place to build this integration generally? So like from my perspective, like if we look at the uh, security aspect, I think that the runner, it's like the closest because it doesn't go through uh, GitHub. And technically, I think that like we should limit the amount of the interactions from GitLab on Vault. Technically, I think that GitLab should never really read the secrets, rather it should basically allow you to create a new one. And that's it, maybe you rotate, but it should be rather runner that just reads the secret directly. So I think that this, this architecture is slightly harder, but I kind of like, it falls into my expectations of the system behavior. Uh, my, my, my only like uh, idea behind it, I think that the general idea of having secrets is like you do not expose them, all of them at once. Rather you kind of define and be very careful on like what secrets you use. So uh, it seems to me that there could be like uh, some interesting glue. Either it should be, I don't know, in the configuration or maybe like we have secret variables that are secret uh, but instead of like putting the data into in, in the field box, you say fetch the secret from the vault and we never expose this information. But this is, for example, the way how we linked uh, what kind of secrets we are using. And maybe, maybe this is the way. Uh, I have a bunch of other questions, but I, I think the runner is the right place for that, really. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, so I want to throw, now that we've agreed to that, let me throw a massive wrench into the entire thing. Um, which, it, again, this is not MVC, so it probably doesn't change anyone's opinion of this. But one, one thing that I want to consider um, in the long term uh, is do we bundle Vault with GitLab, right? Like, do we allow, you know, make it easy, right? Part of part of the reason someone might not use you know proper secret management today is it's hard, right? Um, and you know that's so in line with ha us trying to be a single application. Um, you know, I, I was discussing um, with said that the possibility of do we you know bundle open source vault into GitLab? Now, 
many enterprise customers will probably still have enterprise vault, but if we bundle it in with GitLab, does it make it easier again and more accessible for people to do like first class um, secrets management patterns? Um, so again, that's probably so, not a question. That's definitely not a question for MVC, but does it impact, does anyone have, like I, I still wanna know everyone's opinion, you know, at this point where we're kind of just talking about the beginnings. So um, I, I, I have one opinion on that. Uh, I would say it's gonna be hard uh, on bundling that one because it means that you also have to run that on GitLab.com scale, which effectively gonna mean that we have to rewrite that. Uh, I, I would say that there is like easier way. We do not bundle Vault with GitLab, but we make Vault easy to install with the Kubernetes. Mm. And as long as you have a uh, runner running on the Kubernetes in the same cluster, you could use this Vault. And, and this is the way how we kind of bundle Vaults indirectly. We could, we could do it on the Helm charts for the runner. Yeah, Helm chart into Vault. Into, I like that idea. I would I would say there should rather be a separate application because I, I see like use of the vault outside of the runner just basically as general application for you to to be able to like to manage your secrets and just runner is like the the most obvious use case for that uh, but we could be very clever on how like we interact runner with the with the vault by knowing that they are running in the same cluster for example I like that. I like that. Okay. I, I, I personally think the seat also gonna like that because uh, really like scaling this kind of application, it's like, it's quite another level. And doing that, it's really like, we keep each of these instances in control of the, of the users using these clusters. And by definition, they're gonna be very minimal to run. So the question would be here like, how complex is to like to use Helm install on Vaults and like what are the challenges there uh, really yeah. to make it happen? And that I haven't even looked at like if they publish a Helm chart or we'd have to make a Helm chart, like I don't know. Yeah, but I guess that would be, uh, would that be our responsibility if we bundle it? Okay. Like, well, uh, I mean, if we bundle it into GitLab, we're taking on a lot of responsibility, right? And that took to Camille's point, right? If we make it installable into Kubernetes, um, the positive product spin on that is it's more in line with our Kubernetes focused goals, right? Um, the positive engineering side of it is it's now, it's not, you know, it's not in Omnibus and has to have Omnibus config and blah, 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 blah. Like, and it's much more in line with like, like why did we not bundle Jupyter with, GitLab. Well, because we wanted to be able to make it easy to deploy, yes, but not necessarily, you know, bundle it directly with. So yeah, I, I like that. I think I'm going to open the issue for exactly that because that's probably the right way to do it. Also, my computer's having a heart attack, so I'm going to turn my video off real quick. So if we were to go the runner route, right, which we all kind of agree to do that, I guess, uh, to me, what's, how, how do we break that down? Again, I, right now today, we have this issue open called integrate with Vault, right? And I, what I would like to do is avoid that being the next Windows container executor issue, right? <laughs> and actually break it down in a meaningful way um, where, where we actually have, you know, minimal, minimal things to, to iterate to get there. Um, I guess, what else do we need to talk about as a team to do that? Or should we do that asynchronously? Or what, what are your thoughts kind of on that? I think first step would be like for us to do a POC to actually understand what it involves and how it could work and how it shouldn't work. Because uh, it's hard, like uh, uh, me personally, I never deployed Vault or actually integrated with it with the API. So it's the same thing as when those too many unknowns to actually give an idea what to do. So we might like, it might be ideal to do a small POC, like try to integrate with the vault, like in a not insecure way, just get the secrets and post them in uh, the job and something like that, just to get an idea how to actually integrate and how that could work. And then actually start breaking it down into issues.
Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, I, I, I just want, I, I just wonder about like, like, like the flow that you want to implement. So, because um, we could implement that in new runner, but technically, like, we don't have to do that. Like, everything, all of that can be modeled like with the GitHub CI YAML, just for testing, like, what kind of work workflow we want to support. Mm. I kind of understand like what is the purpose of using Vault. I kind of understand also like different ways to do that. Uh, but I would really like to understand like the, the primary use case or like primary example that you want to uh, integrate or like simplify the usage. So I, I, I think the next step would be like really focus on the on the workflow. Provide like two or three different examples and work on these examples on improving uh, the experience of using them and figuring out what else could be uh, needed. Because uh, like from my perspective, we could share world secrets without extending runner at all. It could be basically like, if you put this snippet in your GitHub CIM, you're gonna patch all the credentials. So this is what you need basically, as long as you properly configure everything. Uh, so, mm, I would like to understand like what we could do better when uh, like besides just doing these like four free lines of the code in the GitHub CI YAML today. Oh, sorry, I was typing on mute, off mute. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I agree, Camille. And so we've got, um, you know, the customer that, that um, contributed uh, this identity API thing uh, is a heavy vault user. Um, I just actually reached out to them again on, on Slack. They're on our Slack um, to talk because I, I don't remember their use cases. Uh, I don't think I was involved with them originally. Um, like what are they doing with the secrets once they have them, right? That, that's the real big question, right? Like, and, and so that's why I, one of the, these steps here, again, I think to Steve's point was like, I wanted to use it myself. Like, Let's say I was in AWS and I had Vault and I wanted to deploy to ECAS or, or deploy to Lambda or something. Um, how would I use Vault to do that, right? Like Vault creates temporary AWS, you know, access key. That's great. So my, my, my theoretical workflow, but again, I don't know how real world, world this is because I haven't done it in the real world, is I ask Vault for temporary AWS credentials. It creates them. Um, you know, with a, an hour or whatever to expire. I use those credentials to run, you know, AWS CLI commands to deploy my code um, to wherever. And then I, I'm done, right? Like I think that, and again, like you said, you could do all that today in the YAML, which is what I intend to do. I actually just got Vault installed in, uh, on an EC2 instance this morning. Um, but how, is that reflective of the real world? I don't know. I mean, that's Brendan's opinion. <laughs> um, and so I'll also uh, work on gathering the specific use case from this advanced user um, that I know we've been working with. Um, I think they're deploying to AWS, but I'm not sure. But again, like that's where it stops even my understanding of exactly what they're doing. So I can fix that. One question I have is where the identity, identity API comes in. Like why would you want to use the identity? of a specific user who ran the job. Like, wouldn't that cause like my job to fail, for example, because I'm a developer, but the maintainer's job to succeed because he's a maintainer, he has more access. I, I think the, the their use case for the identity API was to solve um, all of this in one kind of go, right? <laughs> Which was, how do I get secrets out of vault? How do I authenticate that the right people are, are doing the right kind of jobs? Um, and how do I authenticate to Vault, right? So I think they have, again, I'm a little bit guessing, but I'm pretty sure they have, you know, LDAP, right? Where user identities are, are centralized. So get the identity of the user running a job, that ran the job, authenticate that user against LDAP, authenticate that user against Vault and LDAP, confirm that that user has the ability to get secrets from Vault, create the secrets in Vault, send them, back to the runner, right? Like it was like all in one fell swoop. 
Yeah, but um, like to me, for example, putting the sysadmin hat, like I wouldn't want every user to have access to those circuits. I only want one specific user well, they, that I only know. They're controlling that access in the L, in LDAP, right? Like what they're what they're saying is like, I, I think they would reject it. Would reject you, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I don't want my CI to fail just because I'm just a developer. It doesn't sure. mean I I shouldn't and I shouldn't know the secrets, but doesn't mean that my CI job will fail. If I want my CI job to pass, I would have to go uh, uh, request access to have these secrets available to my specific job, which to me doesn't seem to make sense. It might be, I'm completely misunderstanding the use case. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I might be misunderstanding it too. Um, and that's so, why I, I, I believe that if we come up with a viable alternative for this is what first class vault integration is going to look like in GitLab and we're going to get there in a couple of releases or whatever. Like, I think that it may make that what they're doing moot, right? Um, and, and we're still actually waiting for their response on, on that. Their technical account manager was talking about that. Um, and so I think once they read where we're at, um, and I'm sure they'll watch this, our discussion right now, um, they'll I'm sure they'll be happy to share with us how we have or have not covered their use case right and that'll teach us a lot I think if so first off sorry for having to jump off and miss the first 20 minutes um, but uh, from the from the last couple of minutes where I've been listening it sounds like most of the use cases around um, gaining access and deployment keys if not the entirety of the use case. Is that right? Am I missing something? I think we don't know. I think we're assuming that. Because if that's the use case, this sounds I like mean, a release feature. But not really, because it can be for multiple things, like to download a binary or something okay, you might need. Perfect. To, uh, perfect. As long as it's like, generic and something like that. Yeah, like. For, for me, it sounds like a verify thing, because it can be for anything, downloading a GPG key to like download more software or something like that. I just want to make sure we weren't like making that assumption. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could be, it could even be, I mean, I don't want to plan for this reverse, but it could even be authenticate to a registry where I'm getting my image to build inside of, right? Like it could be anything. Right. And that's, I have very limited use uh, with vault, but I think that's kind of how we were doing it. But and of interest. I yeah, sure. of interest, the the inf it would be another another customer that we need to talk to. Although their maturity level with Vault is is not much past ours. I mean, it is because they have people that have experience with it. But GitLab infrastructure team is talking about in, in implementing Vault over what we're doing there. Um, so it would be very interesting to. Um, Why don't we? Yeah, I we mean, let's hear their use case. Yeah, we should we should make. I, I'm not sure who it is that is running that. Um, I ran into it on their um, group conversation slides. Uh, so I think it's Gara or, or Dave or somebody. I'm just going to ping Dave uh, right now because he'll be online and let me see if yeah. I can get an answer before we're off this call. I would I, I would definitely talk with like the delivery team uh, because they are also working towards like continuous deployments. So they need to figure out a way how to access credentials securely from the CI. So I, I think that they likely the closest to, to like to what we are trying to achieve. So I'm gonna guess the 20 minutes I need to catch up on is pretty impactful, pretty huge. No one can sum it up in like 30 seconds. Um, it looks like there's a ton of content in the doc. There's a lot of content in the doc. I'll sum it up because I'm not smart, so I have to always sum stuff up like that in my head. Um, <laughs> wait, if you're not geez. smart, I don't want you summing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, sh oh shoot, this is recorded and I said it out loud. Um, so yeah, the summary is it's got, we, we're 99% we're sure it's gotta be in the run or not in Rails um, from a security and a implementation perspective. Um, it being in the runner should be not that hard, the famous last product manager words, but the real way to figure that out is going to be to get time to invest in a proof of concept, right? Um, 
similar to what we would have done with Windows had we known how big Windows was going to contain our executor was going to be up front. So how we structure that into a ticket and into a release, I don't know, but um, don't we have things like product discovery? Aren't those something similar yeah. to what we're trying to achieve? I'm not sure. Or, that, that That's for okay. engineering to, to decide. For In my head, it could be write, you know, a documentation article on integrating with Vault. And right, like the output of it is like, this is how you integrate with Vault. And it's gross because it's, you know, 10 lines of a CI script. But we know we're going to come back to it and make it better. Right? Like, I, I don't know. That's That's my four cents. Um, then maybe we should like define like I, I guess Tomas gave a good example on like on a YAML level how to integrate with what like should we do like Tomas said or should we do secrets and where to get the secrets from and so on and so forth like yeah. we can start at the YAML level and then actually think of like doing the POC uh, according to that uh, um, idea of it. Brandon, it sounds like you're in a different county than your microphone is. Oh, sorry. I just switched my microphone back and I think I was broken. Um, earlier today. Is this any better? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have to reboot my microphone. That's right. I said that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure which. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not sure how we answer that. But I don't know that we need to answer that for the proof of concept, do we? Or, or do you think we do? What was the question again? Sorry. So Steve was asking about, I think, what the YAML implementation would look like, right? Is that, is that what your question was, Steve? Yeah, I guess we define, like as Camille said, we define the flow and then do a POC according to that flow. That might be more helpful. But we can do a POC without the flow as well. But uh, like, yeah, if yeah. we have the general idea, we know how, like, uh, how hard it's going to be. So what we could do today uh, is figure out, like, <clears throat> uh, install Vault somewhere, figure out a set of commands to like to integrate with Vault, try to perform some kind of deployment requesting. I don't know temporary AWS credentials or. Uh, temporary certificate to access Kubernetes because th this is the main purpose, and and figure out like how it really fits with like all our existing features like secret variables, protected branches, protected environments, and then figure out how we actually gonna allow and and who we gonna allow to like to to request these secrets and who we gonna allow to create these new secrets because. I think that like adding that to the runner, it's it's the least of my concerns. It should be like, as you Steve are saying, ident uh, identity API, and and basically something along the along these lines on doing like runner, call some API endpoint, request secrets that has limited uh, time, as Brandon is saying, because I, I see that this is defined on the vault, really like for how long a given secret can be used. And then maybe like runner performs some kind of cleanup uh, at the end when it sees that the job is finished. Uh, but I, I think that like everything really like on the higher level is more important now because uh, kind of runner interaction we can model with the GitHub CI YAML. Uh, but I think that we need to solve like how we integrate with GitHub who creates secrets, who is allowed, how we authenticate with the vault, uh, how we translate to like to protected branches and environments, uh, how it relates to secret variables. And uh, if we answer these questions, I think it's gonna also answer us uh, about some kind of proposed UX uh, front end and the style of the configuration that we should be implementing.
Okay. But in my mind, some of that comes pre, some of that's post POC probably, right? Or, or do you think it's not? I guess I'm trying to like not throw all of that into one bucket. Like we could, I'm, if, we had, if we had a good flow, we could then work on POC. And POC would have to solve authentication. POC would have to solve, it wouldn't have to, but POC wouldn't have to solve how does this translate to protective environments? Like, yes, we need to solve that in the integration. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something there. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think that we don't have to solve that yet, but I think that we have to be aware how it could be solved, having that in mind. And because like, uh, for example, if we, we talk, Brandon, about like installing Vault on the Kubernetes cluster, but how it really like, like works with the environment scope. Maybe like we allow you to install multiple Vault integrations that like ones that are less protected and the others that are more protected. Or maybe we just fall back to like to the scopes that are defined in the Vault uh, where we take secrets from. Uh, because as Steve also is saying, like, on one hand, you should not access Steve access the credentials. On the other hand, uh, you should be able to access these credentials. But on the other hand, you should not be able to access these credentials because they give you a permission. And if you want to be very rock, you could still like get these credentials and do some kind of like limited harm with them outside of the CI. Because technically, like you control the CI job and what is happening, and basically nothing prevents you from like requesting these credentials. So it's kind of like connected with the permission model. And I personally, I don't don't have clue like how this flow gonna look like. So uh, I think that we have to try to to play with different approaches, uh, kind of really like testing how the words work uh, by us and trying to translate that into configuration and like probably talk with this customer that is heavy for users like what is their workflow really what they are doing yeah i think configuration wise it would make most sense on the runner as well like having and the tomer file like how to authenticate but default because then like only the DevOps people, like the administrators of the runners have access to that and know how to do that. But yes, me as a developer, I can echo out the variable if I want to and know that if I um, really want to be um, sneaky. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, would, I would really assume that like if you are master or like maybe owner of the project and you're kind of like owning a software installation, it should be more like a GitLab controlled and the GitLab runner should be rather secondary to this process. Because uh, GitLab runner uh, doesn't really control the world. GitLab runner just consumes the world. But I think that in the end, what you would like to get from the world is like uh, allow everyone to access some kind of credentials, like every developer that are limited, and allow them to deploy like QA application or review application. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I would also get some kind of information about the auditing and like who did request when and uh, how we did interact with this uh, token. Uh, this, 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 is, this is like the primary differentiating factor, I think, between vault and secret variables uh, that would give some, some difference on the product side. Mm. I mean, technically, like, and I, I'm just wondering, maybe like the solution here, is like it's not even that GitLab runner is aware of the vault. Maybe it's like, that GitLab runner has additional set of the APIs that it calls through Rails and Rails kind of like forwards the data without persisting them, kind of like building another abstraction and uh, additionally authenticating. Because on one hand, like you could, uh, but this is kind of like going to technical aspect really. Uh, on one hand, you could like make runner directly talk to the first party and request from there. Uh, but on the other hand, it could be like GitLab that is like your proxy uh, that uh, has a, like can uh, uh, authenticate you and authorize, but it doesn't really like care about what is like being forwarded, but just to provide kind of like a, a common layer uh, where we are not really making runner to implement Vault, but rather we make a runner implement something. Uh, that is uh, more generic and Vault is just one of the backends. 
that we are aware on the on the Git operates. Uh, so there is like a number of ways of doing that. Mm. A lot of time then tangential points <laughs> to, to consider. I posted uh, at the bottom of the agenda doc. Um, there's a link to the epic and a handbook discussion and change around like the process they want to use for the infra team using vault. Um, and it looks like it's Alex Hanselka who's kind of driving it mostly from like on the individual engineer side driving the changes. So they could be uh, the, the, the people commenting in there are the people who we should talk to for an internal use case. Yeah, I, I think that's the delivery team. So it would be nice to schedule a call with them and like see what they want to use it and how they would like to use it. That might. I think in the handbook, if you look in the handbook link, I think they talk about how they want to use it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, um, okay. So again, without me having the whole context, like where do we go from here? So I, I, I think it's valid to say that a proof of concept issue is the first move. Um, I think that's what we should, should schedule in 1110. Um, okay. So I think we should open a new issue for that um, and make sure that th that's going to need two things. One, what are the answers we need in order to actually execute on the proof of concept, right? Like workflow. Um, Etc. And two, what are the what are the questions that need to be considered during the proof of concept so that we don't um, so that we make valuable use at that time? Um, and I think out of that comes the direction um, for the next one. So I, I think that's what I want to do is open well proof of concept issue right and discuss like again it can be at first it can be brand an idea of get temporary AWS credentials and deploy to AWS. Maybe we can talk with or look at, uh, ideally we would maybe do proof of concept based on something GitLab infrastructure would actually then use. Um, and then get that in 1110. And hopefully the output of that is a documented way to make Vault work with GitLab today. Uh, and a roadmap for how it looks better in the future. Is that fair? I think so. And so it doesn't sound like front end's going to need to be involved at least at the start. I don't think in the proof of concept. I, I, I don't think so. But hopefully the proof of concept will come up with some ideas of how we can expose things to the user in a meaningful way. Or maybe it won't. Maybe it'll just be if if anything does come up during the uh, POC, uh, please feel free to ping me. I'd be happy to help out. Cool, 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 cool. And then yeah, it sounds like it's like ninety five percent runner, and then some CI YAML uh, extension. Or the POC at least. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like it. Yeah, I'm only thinking about the POC. I don't wanna. Trying trying to bring us back to reality and ground us a bit. Um, not getting too far down um, exciting potential rabbit holes. Okay. Huh, if only we, you know, good job we have nothing else going on for Runner, right? Like, we have tons of bandwidth there. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think let's create a new POC issue with it scoped um, as narrowly as we can and as clear as we can. And then Brendan, we just need to kind of figure out where this lies with the priorities for the other runner stuff. Yeah. Um, but let's write, let's get that issue written up before we necessarily like settle on the priorities. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get off and I, I mean there's a couple other issues I want to write up too, like the idea of like, we're not even installed. Da, da, da. So I'm going to write up a bunch of issues, update the epic kind of based off these decisions, and then I'll ping everybody to correct all the mistakes I make. <laughs> Thanks.
Uh, Brandon, can you try and sketch your meeting with the infra team to like actually discuss it with them? Because I think that would help out a lot. Yeah, yeah, I can do that for sure too. Uh, I would love to do that, so I will do that. And yeah, it sounds like probably not everyone here, especially John, needs to be on that. But I think it'd be informative for uh, quite a few of us. So yeah, I think I think I'll put. Scheduling Tetris is hard though, so if you have to make a time zone thing that excludes me, I can watch the recording, but I think yep. try and include Steve and then yep. we'll try and include you and I'll include like Camille is optional again, like we did on this one and you showed up. So thank you, Camille. Um and we'll go from there. Cool. All right, great. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.